Hello. <laughs> I didn't know what to do there. Uh, so, yeah, we're introducing something new here. Uh, when I first saw this, I thought this was some Magic the Gathering box, right? Because I don't know that much Magic the Gathering. I used to play it in the past. I have a friend and super into it. But even the card art on the back, I was thinking, looked pretty Magic the Gathering-like. Like, it's not the same, but it doesn't look that far off. So it kind of had me confused at first. But then I looked into it, and this is actually a standalone board game. It's a card game, but it's the standalone thing. There might be add-ons for it, I don't know. Um, but if you can't tell, yeah, I got it on clearance. Normally it's $25. For 10 bucks. I was like, you can figure this out. So it's going to be a new style, like, content I have on here. What we're going to do is we're going to open this up. We're going to figure out what it's all about. We're going to do an unboxing of this like we normally do. But then, whenever Anna gets home, we're actually going to sit down and play this game. Um, not on camera, at least for the time being. If we decide that we like this format, we might start doing some of that on camera. But we're going to sit down, we're going to learn how this game works, we're going to play it, and then I'll come back and explain to you guys exactly how it works and what I like and what I don't like about it. So more of a review-like thing. Uh, I like the idea of doing different board games and card games like that. It might be a fun thing to do moving forward with the channel. So if you like this kind of content, let me know. And if it, fe if it feels kind of odd, it is my first time doing this. So take it with a grain of salt. All right, so let's dig into this thing. And yeah, like I said, it was on clearance, so you can even see like, the original tag back here, sort of. It was originally 25 bucks, and that's what I'm usually seeing it for online. But let's go ahead and check this thing out. So let me get this cut open. You know, I should get my thumbnails like without like the giant clearance tag on it, but I didn't, so... Yeah, that, that's what we're sticking with. All right, so here is our beautiful box. It actually doesn't look bad. I also like that they have, like, all this artwork along the edges. Instead of just, like, doing black like they could have, it makes it more... I don't know. I guess it makes it feel more official. Yeah, even on the inside of the box, you have, like, the logo, like, indicators there. I'm guessing for, like, the different elements or whatever. So, first off, we have a rule book, which is decently large. Yeah, okay... See, I, 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 I hate this. I hate this. Give me a rule book. Don't give me a rule poster. Or I have to flip it around like I'm building Ikea furniture. M make it an actual book, man. Come on. And what the hell? It's like a Pokemon Jumbo card. Uh, Hercule the Mountain. Okay, so we have all giant cards here. I didn't expect that. So we have uh, Hercule the Mountain, big ol' hammer dude. Um... So I think these are the legends specifically that they're referring to. Naga the Serpentine. We have Nixia the Queen of the Night. Really creepy looking artwork there. Lightbringer Ethros. He's just straight up naked. And the Obelisk. So from what little I've read from like the back of the box and looking at something about it online, um, you do pick a legend and you're actually playing as that legend. You're playing basically as a god. And you're controlling minions that basically fight in this, like, arena. And I think it's, like, the last, like, the like if you get knocked out of the arena, you lose. You need to have at least one um, fighter left in the arena itself. But I'll explain more about that later whenever I actually figure it out. So it looks like we have some pretty crappy little cardboard pop-out damage counters and other types of counters. I, I mean, it's like the Pokemon-style crap. I don't like these. They're just really crap cardboard. I get why they do it. It'd be more expensive to do, like, die-cast stuff. Um, actually, like, okay, at least they pop out easy. I just accidentally pressed my thumb on it, and it started to pop out. So, like, they come off pretty clean. They, like, there is a little bit of an edge there, but it's not terrible. Okay. But yeah, um, just these basic little damage counter things. But then, looking inside the box, we get to the more interesting stuff. So we have these two perfectly square little dice here, as soon as it wants to focus. And they have, like, you know, decent, like, little pattern to them. They're not just, like, straight, you know, black or gray. So I do like that. They have, like, an actual pattern to them. Like, they actually used a die cast mold to make these and poured in, like, different colors in order to make it, you know, different for everybody. So not every, you know, set of dice will be the same. That's cool. Okay, so we have two different packs in here. This one actually has like a roll thing in it about different phases. The back of the cards are really plain. I hope that the cards aren't, uh, you know, bad feeling, if you know what I mean. I've done a lot of cards in the past, especially if you look at the earlier days of this channel, where I unboxed all different kinds of things. Like, some cards, like, some companies just make the cards feel bad to hold. Like, they just don't feel right. So we'll see. So, you have our Phases card there. Another Phases card. Phases card. Phases card. 
phases card. Uh huh. So that's just like the, okay. So we have the different element types here: water, fire, light, dark, and unknown. So the obelisk is actually the unknown. And then Bane Token, Mythic Point Token, and Damage Counter. So then we get to the actual artwork, and it doesn't look bad. It looks like some crap that Epic Games would throw out there, though. Um, so these appear to be, like, different, like, environmental things that you can do. Why is my camera starting to overheat already? Are you kidding me? All right, well, we're going to quickly th fly through this little pack and hope my camera doesn't overheat. Go, go. Okay, we're getting to the cool stuff. All right, uh, we'll stop it and let it cool down. All right, camera's cooled down. Now we can actually take our time. So, Reckless by Fang, neat little uh, phoenix-like little bird. Uh, Blistering Barbarian. We have Chained Heli, and I actually like that. It's almost like a Yu-Gi-Oh-like thing, just in, in, like almost like a League of Legends-like art style. Uh, Flame Reader, Fire Dancer, Hellhound, Mischief Mischievous Imp, uh, Kandoros Shaman. So I'm realizing this deck is a lot of fire cards. Okay, well we have some what I'm assuming is water here. Yes, we have uh, a Ray, Cold-Blooded Siren, F uh, Flood Burst, Behemoth, and Leviathan. And then last, the Oracle of the Depths. I thought that was the last one. Um, so I was mentioning the hand feel on these. Okay, so that, I didn't realize that. Okay, so these, which look like almost like areas or like, you know, different like effects that you can do as a god, are actually have the white back to them. But then the monster slash character cards have the black backing to them. I didn't realize that. But it looks like this deck is specifically water and fire with a lot more fire than water. So... It makes me wonder if there are expansions for this game, because we know there are five elements, I believe? Yeah, there are five elements, and there's only two incorporated in that deck, assuming there's only two incorporated in the other, then that would make me assume that there's actually going to be expansions that you can purchase for other, you know, legends and elements. Yeah, they really don't make these packaging things easy to open. I kind of, like, cut up the back of that card just trying to get it open. Like, I tried using my hands, I couldn't get it, I had to use a knife. That sucks. They really should have like a tab or something you can pull. But um, looking at this, oh, there are no elemental things in this. Are these all meant to be shuffled together or something? Maybe they're not two different decks. Um, so Resourceful, Spider Crab, Sea Snake, Venomous Hydrozone, Saltwater Gorgon, uh, Terrarium Turtle, Blade Demon, which is just Edgelord Incarnate. Uh, Brutish Ogre, and these are the dark element, I believe. I don't fully... Yeah, okay, so that is the dark. Um, Flesh-Eating Warlock. Uh, Airdrote Goblin. Uh, Gremlin Infiltrator. Masked Mercenary. Master of Puppetry. Shadow Scorpion. Ink Blood Banshee. Hooded Mantis. Now we're here to the light cards. Avenging Angel. The light cards like doing naked things, apparently. Uh, Crane Aesthetic. <laughs> Drunken Muck, Golden Sprite, Harpy of Light, Ironclad Pegasus, Luminous Lion, Pixu Radiant Ar Archian, Ravenous Griffin, um, not even gonna try to pronounce that, Mind Sucker. Um, so this is like the unknown element. Illusionist, Faceless Maiden, uh, Demon of the Haze. The unknown element seems more like it's more like a psychic idea, you know? Uh, Shapeshifter, Phantasmal, Raven, Three-Eyed Fox, Cryptic Wist Walker, Unicorn Aberration, and Ch uh, Chasm Worm. So, with this little pile we had here, we actually got things from all of the other elements, including more water. So I'm guessing the fact that we only saw a little bit of water in this deck um, was because it's supposed to be that these aren't two different decks that there's going to be a way that you are both pulling from the same pile, if you get what I mean. Again, I obviously don't know right off the bat. I will say the artwork isn't terrible. It's not amazing, and let me explain. A lot of these feel like, like, game concept art, which I do like. But you know how, like, you know, like, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, like, they'll have different styles of art for different characters and different cards and different, you know, environments. These all use the exact same style, which makes sense for a non-TCG game, because this is a basically board game at this point. So it makes sense that these cards would have all art styles that are fitting to each other and look like something that like Riot Games or Epic Games would put out there. 
but I feel like it does take away some of the charm that some other card games have. That's just a personal opinion there, obviously. Here in a while, whenever my lady friend gets home, we're going to sit down, learn the rules of this game, we're going to play it together, and then I will come back and let you guys know exactly what I thought, how the game actually works, and see if it's actually worth picking up, seeing as you can actually still, at the time of recording, maybe not the time of uploading, you can actually buy this online on GameStop, still on clearance for $10, and I saw it on a few other sites for clearance as well. So even if you didn't want it, like if you liked it enough, but you didn't want to pay 25 bucks for it, you could get it for less, more than likely online. So maybe you guys will like it. Uh, I guess we'll see if I do here in a little bit. For eons, exiled warriors and dangerous beasts have been banished to a barren wasteland. Hailing from distant elemental domains, these fighters and monsters have assembled in the Bane Sphere to battle for control. Build a team of fearsome heroes and forge fragile alliances in this card game of strength and strategy. Many before you have been vanquished, but a select few defeated their every enemy to become legends. Will you join them in glory? No, I fucking lost! Alright, so yes, I uh... We, we tried out this game. Uh, this is actually the next day. I am somewhat limited on time. That's why the lighting might look a little bit different. I only have one light up. And I actually have uh, natural lighting. Uh, it snowed like crazy last night. And so I have a nice soft white light coming in from the window thanks to the light reflecting off the snow. So hopefully it still looks pretty good. Um, I do love using natural light whenever I can in my videos. So let's go over the things that I like and don't like. I gotta say, this is a fun game. I don't think I could say it's like a 10 out of 10. I, I do intend to play it again, so that's already a good note. But one thing I immediately don't like about not gameplay-wise, just talking about this casing here, you have to keep these. And let me explain. In here, you actually have holders, that's what the empty cartons are for, for the different tokens. So you have your Bane tokens up here, which can all be held perfectly in there. We have, I call them mana, they had another name. And then we have the hit tokens here, right? If you don't leave these popped out cardboard in the box, then there's too much empty space left, and those can just fly all over the box. So you have to keep these beaten up pieces of cardboard in here if you want to keep those from flying everywhere. It's stupid. Anyway, let's get into how the game actually works. So I'm not going to go super, super into detail, because I think that would be boring as hell. However, um, as we mentioned, there are different elements. So here are darkness cards. Here are our unknown cards. Here are the water, our light, and our fire. So there are five different elements. And whenever you pick your hero, um, so in this case, whenever I played, I actually picked the obelisk, the unknown hero, the uh, legend, sorry. Um, so I actually picked the obelisk. It means that the only cards I'm using are the unknown cards, but while there are 10 of each um, elemental, you know, like 10 card for each element, you only get to pick six. That is your entire deck is only six cards. Um, so that way it's kind of interesting because then there are four that you left behind. So then in the next battle, like next time you play this game, you could choose, okay, well actually I want those two and I didn't like these two. So you can mix up your gameplay and learn different things with the different cards. If I've seen, they're all pretty well balanced. There are probably one or two that I would avoid using personally, but other people might want to find a workaround for. Because like there are one or two cards, whenever we first played this, like, I just picked at random. I just went for artwork that I liked. But I had, I had like one card, I can't remember what it was now. Um, that like its ability whenever it was used as a, as a support wasn't that great. So some people might be tempted to leave some cards out while others might not. So it is fairly simple. Um, every turn you get to use, you have a total of two mana, but you only get to use one during your action phase. So you can use one mana to place what is known as a Bane token. I'm just going to grab one at random. Um, perfect, I actually got the right one. You get to use a Bane token, which you will always have five of. It'll be on your legend. If you place this Bane token on another enemy creature, it now has your Bane. Now it costs one mana to do so, but you can only use one during the action phase. So everybody, every hero's Bane, every legend's Bane has a different ability. So in the case of the Obelisk, it actually takes whatever card you put it on. Both of its champion and support abilities are nulled. It no longer has any abilities. On top of that, if I kill the monster that still has the Bane on it, I also deal one damage to one of the support cards as well. So every legend has their own Bane, and that one's actually stupid useful. I like that um, that aspect of the Obelisk. 
So then, on let's say you had a Bane on one of your cards. Well, instead of using your one mana to place a Bane, you can use your one mana to remove a Bane from one of your characters. Well, then that is it. So your other mana can be used if one of your cards has a, an ability that requires it. So you only get two mana per turn, one during action phase, one during your attack phase, where you can choose to use one mana to, you know, use whatever ability one of your cards requires. Maybe a card requires two, I've only ever seen them require one from what little I've played. So our shapeshifter right here, you can see he has four health in the right corner and one attack in the left. I gotta say, uh, I wish they had some kind of icon. We actually started getting confused while we were playing because, you know, you're viewing the other opponent's cards upside down and it caused a little bit of confusion. I wish they had some kind of symbol indicating which one's health and which one's attack. Um, but yes, right is your health, um, left is your attack. So, if you were to lay this card as a champion, you get the champion ability, but you can't use the support. If you lay it as a support, you get the support ability and not the champion ability. So this guy, uh, for example, I actually used him as a champion for a long time during our match. It says that the shapeshifter, um, the shapeshifter's strength is equal to the strength of, of any player's champion. So for example, whenever Anna would lay out a creature that had a strength of 2, the shapeshifter's attack is no longer 1, now it's 2. It made it a lot more useful to try and uh, level the, ba uh, the battlefield. So if I believe the shapeshifter as a support character, what it actually does is if I want to use its ability, it'll actually be the same ability as my current champion. So let's say this champion right here, right? Let's say I made this our, our current champion. I can add one damage counter um, to this character, but then I get two extra power. With this ability, I could actually double that and do it twice. So I could, um, its, its support ability would now become the same as the Wisp Walker. So I could lay two damage counters on it, which would really hurt this guy, and in fact it would uh, just about kill it. But then it would have an extra four attack onto its already two, which meant it would make it six, which is insane. It makes it into a glass cannon. So you kind of get the idea. As far as the actual battlefield layout, you get one champion and two supports. That is your entire playfield. One champion and two supports behind it. Now let's say your champion dies. Your champion gets sent to the graveyard unless you have something that you can try to prevent it with. Then you have to pick. You don't get to, you know, you don't have a hand. The rest of your cards are in a deck upside down. You have to pick which one of your supports is going to now take over as your champion. Then you draw randomly off the top of your deck to lay your next support. Then during your next turn, if let's say you wanted to make one of those champion, instead of spending you, um, the one mana you get to spend during the action phase on either putting a ban on an enemy card or removing a ban from your own, you can actually choose to swap out your champion with one of your supports. So it's actually pretty useful. I mean, there, there are some, I'm not, like I said, I'm not gonna go super detailed into all of this. I think it's about enough detail for you guys to understand how it works. Um, the whole point is that you want to destroy all of their six cards. Once they're down to only two cards in the battlefield, their obelisk no longer functions the same. Their legend, in my case, the obelisk, it actually flips over and becomes a champion itself. So my, my champion actually would have um, zero attack, but 15 health, which is the most health, most health of any of the legends. But it now gains different abilities. So if I'm using it as a champion, I can remove three damage counters from it every turn, or I can add two damage counters to the obelisk to deal out six damage to whatever cards I want. I don't just have to attack one with six damage. I could spread it out amongst all three of their cards if it would manage to kill all three of their cards. So the legends are stupid powerful. So even if one opponent gets down to just their legend, it's going to become a problem because now they have the most power on the field. So if you're playing with like three or four people, if somebody's down to their legend being on the field, you really need to focus on taking them out. If you're playing two player, it means that your legend is going to be up pretty soon because theirs is going to be destroying you. But hopefully by the time your legend comes out, you will have dealt enough damage to theirs that you can easily win now that you have your legend on the field. It's neat. The whole point is to kill the legend. Once the legend is gone, the game is over. Um, but they do have different abilities that make it you know harder to take them out. Like the obelisk specifically, um, it has an ability where whenever a card dies, I can roll a die. And if I land on a six, which I didn't, the card doesn't actually die. Instead of going to the graveyard, it goes to the bottom of your deck. When, when your deck is only six cards large, with three of them out on the field at all times, three in the deck, 
that's super helpful because you only have six characters that you can you know keep alive so that would give you another opportunity later down the line with it going to the bottom of your deck but i'll say a lot of these cards have very very unique abilities i really do like how this game is played i have one complaint now, okay, okay, I have a few. I want to say the instructions weren't the easiest to follow. They didn't go the most in-depth, in my opinion. But they weren't terrible. Um, I feel like one thing it complicates the game much more than necessary. And it's something we haven't talked about yet. So we have the white cards. These were like the area or event cards I was telling you about. They're actually called like something sphere. I don't really remember. Basically, there are three for water, three for unknown, three for dark, yada yada. Whenever you play, um, let's say you were using the water deck, well then you would just have all three of these in another deck as well. Then let's say you were fighting an, uh, somebody like me who was using unknown, then those would also go into the pile. And if it was only two players, we'll just call it there. You would shuffle these together, and it would become a third deck on the sidelines. Then, once um, per round, so a round it would be you and your opponents going. So how many? if there are five players, it's all five of you going. Then the next round starts when it gets back to the original player. So for one round, you flip one of these cards over, and like it says here, unknown type peers get um, one max HP. So basically it's a, it's a um, buff for, in this case, my cards. Um, so during this turn, they have one more max HP, which would affect the entire round. So it's just five people. Well, it's actually five turns that this would be in effect. Um, I don't care for this. I don't care for the spheres. To be to be more accurate, um, a bit over halfway into playing this game, me and Anna kept forgetting that these abilities were even in effect. That we just said, screw it, we're not going to use them anymore. Because, like, th there's already enough to keep up with. There are so many abilities at play when you look at your legend, when you look at the card that's being used, the cards that you're targeting, the support cards that you can use, the, the counter or add on to other attacks. There are so many things already at play in this game. I feel like this just really overcomplicates it. Now, there's nothing requiring you to use these to play the game. In the future, I will probably try to try these out again, but I have a feeling that I still won't care much for them and will probably still pass them up. I, I don't care for the sphere thing. It, like I said, it just caused more confusion than was necessary. Mostly it caused forgetfulness. Um... And then you look back and go, oh crap, you know, I could have run that I could have won that battle two rounds ago because we've had this card laying out for forever and kept forgetting it was even active. So I don't know. Like that's up to you guys. It depends on how good your memory is and how good you are at paying attention to multiple things. I don't play super complicated card games all the time. Um and I want to call this one super complicated, but that I'm not used to the multi-tracking thing. So maybe some of you guys will like that more than I do. But all in all. Yes, like I said, Anna did actually beat me. We got it pretty close, but when uh, we actually got down to just our legend legends, and at that point she just wiped the floor. There was nothing I could do. But mostly because I gotta say the obelisk, I still like it. I still think its abilities are insane. But with the no attack, it kind of sucks that the only way it can hurt other people is by hurting itself. And when you're fighting a legend that can already deal, like her, her card is able to do like nine damage to me in one turn, which is ridiculous. Uh, there's nothing I can do at that point, because if I removed three damage and she was able to do nine again, I'm, I'm kind of screwed. Um, so, probably not the best, but I don't think the Elvis is really made for its abilities when it's being used as a hero. I think its abilities are most useful when it is still just being used as a legend. But... I really do like this game, as much as I sound like I was complaining about it. It's not going to be a jump-to-it, go-to kind of game whenever I have like a party going on or friends over, but it's definitely going to be up there. Like I enjoyed this a lot more than I expected. I expected to have similar feelings to it that I do with Magic. Um, no, it's actually really good. I really do like this game. Um, and yes, I would say for $10, it's, it's definitely worth picking up on clearance. Um, if you can't get it for $10, it's still worth it for $25, if you think so. I think I would kind of struggle with that price, mostly because I am super stingy. Um, but yes, it is definitely a fun game to play. So if you guys enjoyed this video, and you like this style of video, you know, just reviewing, like, card games and, like, board games, um, you know, doing an unboxing, learning how it works, explaining to you guys, you know, after I've tried it out, if it's good or not, what I liked, what I didn't, and going briefly over the rules while not necessarily detailing everything. Um, 
If you guys like this format, let me know. I never considered doing it before until I saw this, so I will always have this game to thank for that. Um, but if you guys do like the format, just let me know. Leave a comment, and if there's a certain board game or card game that you want me to look into, either because you really like it or because you don't know if you want to buy it or not, like you've just been interested but you're not positive, let me know. Maybe I'll look into it. But yeah, hopefully um, you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like, subscribe down below, and hopefully I will see you all next time. Goodbye.